right, everybody. Thanks again for uh, coming and watching the next episode. Uh, what I wanted to go over today was adding Brembo's to a car. Uh, you know, I get asked all the time, uh, will these fit? And someone will send me a picture of a wheel. And then what I do is I go through some tech support with them. What I decided to do is actually create a video to go over, I guess, a few key items or things you should be planning on before you buy those calipers. Uh, so for starters here, uh, what we have is, what we have right here is typical calipers that you can get on the market. Uh, for example, that is a six piston caliper. Uh, you know, they're getting pretty rare to find, but, but I do have one to show as an example. Another type of caliper that you can get would be your, you know, your average Camaro. Uh, that is a Camaro that was powder coated. However, in this situation, uh, those calipers were, um, one of those situations where, oh, hey, uh, I know a guy that can powder coat my calipers for a hundred bucks. And there you go. What ended up happening with these is, uh, if you could actually see in the bores, they actually got powder inside the bores. And when you get powder inside the bores, what ends up happening is the uh, pistons will leak. And when you go hit the brakes, your foot will pretty much go to the floor because there's brake fluid squeezing right out. So you really have to watch what you're doing when you get calipers. Uh, this is an example of something you could probably buy used on eBay. Uh, here's an example of a CTSV style caliper. CTSV calipers are pretty much used on uh, a lot of different applications. They're the average caliper that you would uh, see going on a car. Lots of companies make brackets for them. The reason I'm, I'm sticking mostly GM is General Motors calipers are pretty much used on a lot of cars for modding. Uh, these are examples of different types of rotors that you can pick up. Here's a used rotor, uh, probably with, you know, let's say about 30,000, 40,000 miles on it. And then here's an example of a brand new rotor. These are R1 concepts. Whenever I sell uh, brake calipers to somebody and they need rotors, I only use uh, R1 concepts. R1 concepts make some great rotors and um, they're pretty heavy duty. I, I mean, I have guys that tell me they use these things at the track with no issues whatsoever. The other thing I wanted to go over is different types of pads. Uh, for example, you're going to see here uh, three different selections of pads. So this pad um, will allow you to run pretty much a 19 inch wheel. Uh, this pad, you're going to need a minimum of a 20 inch wheel. And this pad, uh, you can probably go with about an 18 inch wheel. The reason is, is these stick out the top of the caliper. So if you look here, on this Camaro caliper. Uh, the reason the Camaro from the factory comes with 20 inch wheels, believe it or not, is actually the, the dampers that are on the pads. I don't know. I run cars. If you look over here in my GTO, I actually run no dampers whatsoever and I, actually, I do not get any squeaking on them. Uh, this is an 18 inch wheel. I don't get any squeaking. And if you look over here on my Chevy SS, my Chevy SS, does have these weights and I actually get squeaking in the beginning when I start driving when the pads are cold. Uh, but what I wanted to go over today is specific measurements that you should be taking on your wheels to know if your wheels will actually clear big brakes and then a few little things about you know if you have to clear them uh, running spacers and you know spacers can be dangerous to run but running spacers and, and I guess a safer way to run spacers or at least the way I do it. So I'm gonna switch over so I can show you a couple measurements. Uh, these are the important things that I want everyone to see. Let me just make sure you can see. Okay. So the first thing I want you to see when you're trying to figure out what you're gonna be doing on your Brembo's is you should really get an idea of your hat. Um, like this, for example, this rotor, if you see where I'm measuring, has about a half inch uh, distance from the hat to the face of the rotor. Uh, this rotor is going to be about the same. And then what you're going to see is, for example, on these six piston calipers, a measurement you should be taking would be basically from about here to the face of this caliper. Um, again, I want to show you a little closer from here to the face of the caliper. The reason you need that measurement is going to be for rim uh, backspacing clearance. Uh, I want to show you on a typical uh, four piston caliper because these are used very, on a very wide range of cars. Um, so again, that measurement's going to be from here to the face of the caliper. So you're usually dealing with about two and a half inches. Uh, two and a half inches is the minimum, two and a half inches is the minimum um, clearance that most of these Brembo's need. Uh, the six pistons I would go with about Six pistons, I would go with about uh, 
two and three quarters, maybe even three inch backspacing. But so here's an example of a car that comes with Brembo's from the factory. Uh, you're gonna see that from the face of the rotor to the back of the spokes, you have two and a half inches of clearance. If, if I have, for example, less clearance, I would have to run a wheel spacer. Um, and you know, that could get tricky because then you have to start worrying about your tire to fender clearance. You might end up uh, interfering with your fender and damaging your paint. Uh, for example, over here, here's my Cobra. So these are uh, 17 inch rims. I had a tough time getting Brembo's behind these. I took tons of measurements. I only had about an inch and a half of back spacing, so I ended up having to go with Will Woods. I really like the way these look on the car. I mean, they, you know, when you see Cobras, a lot of Cobra guys run these, uh, these brakes. So unfortunately I had to use Will Woods. Are they better or worse than Brembo? They're more expensive than Brembo uh, and they're a little smaller. Uh, I do I do prefer a nice Brembo caliper, especially with pad changes and rotor changes. They're much easier than these, but again, um, that's what I had to do on this car because the backspacing was so small. Now here's an example of, uh, well this, that, this isn't a typical Mustang rim, but it is, it is a Mustang wheel you can buy. And again, we're dealing with backspacing. So on this car, you'll see that at the peak of the spoke, I have a slightly over two and a half inches of space, but then when you get up a little higher, like for example, I test fit some Brembo's on this car. I have a video of me doing it. When I get a little higher, what happens is the Brembo's land about here. And you'll notice that my back spacing now is under two and a half inches. So this car actually requires me to run roughly a six to 10 millimeter spacer. On this car, now if you look here, if I run a six to 10 millimeter spacer, it brings the tread out almost to the fender. Um, so luckily it's a small enough spacer that the tire will not interfere with the fender. But some cars may require you to run potentially a 20 millimeter spacer. And if you're running a 20 millimeter spacer, you may actually hit that fender and you may cause few, you know, damages to your car and you, you don't wanna do that. Um, and for example, over here on my GTO, so th these rims have a just shy of a two and a half inches of clearance. What I actually had to do on this car, and I don't recommend doing this, I did it because, you know, I like modding cars and I'm okay with it. I actually machined the face of the caliper and I made the caliper slightly thinner. So th this brake kit on my car requires less than two and a half inches. And then in the back of the car, I'm running a BMW rotor. Uh, I didn't have to do anything special with the uh, with the caliper itself, but I did have to do something special with the way it mounts and I had to modify the brackets that I bought uh, and actually set the calipers inward um, But now on this car I ended up achieving in the back I mean with a deep dish wheel two and a half inches of clearance I still needed that two and a half inches of clearance But I had to modify a bunch of things to make it fit again. I don't suggest doing it this way I just want you to know what you're in store for and then you'll see over here on my Corvette that I had custom wheels made. Now this is an example of sort of an extreme uh, modification to fit brakes. You'll see on this car that I do have fender flares front and in the rear. So the fender flares have nothing to do with the brakes. I just like the look of fender flares and wide wheels. I even have, you know, the rims in the back were actually machined to the point where uh, I actually had them widened. I believe these are about they're 14 inches wide, uh, which is pretty cool. I, I love the way the, the, it looks, but the reason I did that was for traction, not for brakes. What I had to do for brakes was I did machine or have these rims um, offset so I would be able to run a large six piston caliber from a Z06. Uh, so it gave me three inches of clearance. Um, but I decided ultimately to go with a uh, four piston caliper for cost reasons. And honestly, the, the four piston calipers perform really well. I will be upgrading the rear of this car. Uh, currently what I did is I custom machined some brackets to actually fit the front original calipers in the back and run a 14 inch wheel. What I'm gonna be doing is uh, putting another four piston caliper in the back and be able to mount it on another 14 inch rotor. I'm getting some custom rotors machined. Again, I don't suggest doing that. I just enjoy this kind of stuff it's a hobby to me so I can get away with doing things like that now over here I guess one of the important things I wanted to go over was if you see I have an assortment of spacers let me just set you up on my tripod again the thing with spacers is they are dangerous um, you know they can be used safely 
they can be used safely, but what you need to understand is there's, you know, just like with a gun, um, guns, are, guns are no matter what are dangerous, even though you can use them in a safe manner. Here's different examples of different types of spacers. Here's your typical AutoZone style spacer. Um, if you need to test fit something and you wanted to figure out what kind of clearance you needed, great. You can use these, put the wheel on, make sure you have your clearance. Do not run with these spacers. The problem is, is when you clamp the wheel down, there's such a gap that when you're clamping the lug down, you could actually crack your rims because the rim is not actually uh, mating to a surface. It's going into this opening. And over time, you can end up destroying a pretty expensive set of wheels. Uh, again, just for test fitting, don't run with these. Uh, this is an example of you know, a thinner spacer. This is something you could throw on your car. Um, it's probably hub. It'll probably you know, seal right to the hub or, or ride on the hub without a problem. And these are heavy duty. Uh, the, something like this, uh, they're thin. And what you can do is probably get away with um, running your factory lug nut. It's so small. However, I always recommend the use of an ET lug nut and I'll go over that in a second. Now this is an example of the same type of spacer, just thicker. Now when you get into this thickness, I believe this is a six or maybe a 10 millimeter. This is where I would recommend an ET lug nut. If you see, an ET lug nut stands for extended thread. The reason I like extended thread lug nuts is even, even when you add a spacer and you put this lug nut in, you'll actually see that you're getting uh, more thread grab on the lugs than you would um, had you used a regular lug nut. And then this is an example of a hub centric. So when you, when you end up getting thicker than a certain spacer, um, what I like to do is run a hub centric style spacer. A hub centric spacer, what it does is when you put this on the car, you end up losing your mating surface. So when you put the rim on the car, what actually centers the wheel is the hub. And what this does is when you put it on the car, it, it gives you a new hub for you, for you to be able to put your wheel onto it and it actually centers the wheel and, and eliminates vibrations. Uh, I don't, I really can't stand vibrations and, and I definitely don't like vibrations on cars uh, going down the road because vibrations can actually cause nuts and bolts to come loose and especially lug nuts, you don't want that to happen. So if you're going to be running, you know, a thicker spacer, always get something that's hub centric. I always run ET lug nuts. Again, these are called extended thread lug nuts. I like these because the clamping force is much stronger. Uh, you get about, uh, I want to say 50% extra thread contact with uh, the, your average ET lug nut and try not to buy, you know, like an eBay one, you go, go with a, uh, you know, call Summit Racing or someone like that, or maybe, uh, uh, you know, there's a couple manufacturers out there that make them that are, that are high quality, high strength, get those, don't get some cheapo ones. Uh, here's an example of another style that you can get. Uh, typically what I do is uh, I, I go to, uh, I think their company is called Race Tech Motorsport. I always get a, a high strength aluminum. It's it, you know it's like an aerospace. Uh, it's used in a lot of race applications, and I have them custom make them. This is an example of what they make, and these are really strong. Uh, I believe they made these for me as well, and they made this thick one for me as well. So what I wanted to say in closing is I just again I like to help people. You know over the years of me. Uh, supplying people with different types of brake uh, products for their cars. I realize that a lot of people actually don't know what to get for their cars because there's so much misinformation on the internet. And a lot of people aren't really wrenching on cars like they used to, but they do want those modifications. They just don't want to go to a shop and pay thousands of dollars just to get something that's a slight performance increase or maybe a, you know, an appearance in, you know, upgrade. Uh, some people just like brakes because they look nice. Uh, some people like brakes because their brakes look awful and they wanted to put something in place that looks better. And some people just want something that performs well. I, I'm kind of in the middle. I love brakes. Uh, they're a hobby for me. I love the way a car looks with a nice Brembo caliper behind the rim. So I, I get a lot of calls and I get a lot of emails and text messages. Uh, with questions about, you know, fitting Brembo's on cars. And I really wanted to make this video to help everybody out. I, I do help a lot of people and I figured it would be easier if I had a video out there. Again, this video is for information purposes. Um, this is not the, the standard way of, of adding Brembo's to a car and modifying your car, though it can be dangerous, can also be fun and rewarding, um, which I enjoy. I kind of spend all my time in my garage and, and this is what I do the, do the cars. And I've learned over the years that a lot of people don't really wrench on cars as much as they used to. And, you know, cars from the factory are so good 
that, uh, you know, little things here and there that need to be done. If people just go, you know what, I'm not going to do it. And some people just half the mod. I'm a, I'm a half the mod kind of guy. So, and so I decided to make this video kind of pointing out the key things you need to know when you're deciding to put brakes, you know, bigger brakes on your car. And what I'm going to be doing is there's going to be some future videos of each one of this car. So this car has obviously mods done. This car is extremely modded. Most people don't even know what year this car is anymore. Uh, this is actually a 2007. This is another 2007. This will be getting, um, you know, brake upgrades coming. That obviously has a brake upgrade. Um, I'll be, of course, I'm into brakes. And uh, that's, that's what I'm making this video for. So thanks again. Uh, I appreciate everybody who likes and subscribes and keeps in touch. And uh, I appreciate everything everyone does and, and, and the commenting and the sharing. And thanks again, everyone.